So now, if our function depends on multiple variables, how are we going to find um, the critical values, the possible locations where we might have a max or a min? So the answer is by considering the directional derivative. You know, we can take the directional derivative of our function in the direction of any unit vector. Remember, what we do is we take the gradient of f and we dot it with that unit vector. Now, if the gradient of f is not 0, that means that there's some direction u that, um, in particular, you could go in the direction of the gradient, say. So if the gradient is not the 0 vector, then there's some direction u that you could go that you could get an increase in the height. So, or <clears throat> so, so there's always, whatever the gradient is, if the gradient is not 0, there's going to be some way to get higher. So if you're going to have a highest point or a lowest point, then the gradient is going to have to be equal to 0. So the gradient's going to have to be um, the 0 vector, right? The vector whose components are 0. If not, we can always go in the direction of the gradient and get higher because the gradient points in the direction of steepest ascent. So if the gradient isn't 0, there's going to be some direction in which we can go to increase our um, to increase the value of our output. So if we want to find critical points now, we're looking for places where the gradient is 0. So let's look at this example here. We find the gradient of this function. Let's see, we take the derivative with respect to x and we get 8x minus 6y minus 20. And we take the derivative with respect to y and we get minus 6x plus 10y plus 26. So if we want to find critical points, we need to figure out where is that derivative, where is that gradient equal to 0. And this is a system of, in this case, two equations and two unknowns. If our function had three variables, then we would have a system of three equations and three unknowns. Now, we could simplify this a little bit because um, I can divide through by a few things. This top one could be divided through um, by 2, and we would have 4x minus 3y minus uh, 10 equals 0. And divide this one through by 2, and we have negative 3x plus 5y plus 13 equals 0. Let's go ahead and um, solve this system, what we probably want to do is to eliminate one of the variables. And I notice if I take the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 4, I'll have a 12x and a negative 12x, and so when I add those two equations, they'll cancel. So if I do that, um, if I take the top equation by 3, I have 12x minus 9y minus 30 equals 0. And then if I take the bottom equation by 4, I have minus 12x plus 20y uh, 4 times 13 is 52. And now when I add those equations, I get an equation that says 11y plus, let's see, negative 30 plus 52 would be 22. 11y plus 22 is 0. So 11y is negative 22, so y is negative 11. Now knowing that y is negative 11, I could go back to either uh, either of these equations that involves x and replace the value for y. So for example, in that first equation, we have 4x, negative 3 times y, since y is negative 11, would be plus 33, um, minus 10, equals 0. So 4x plus 23 equals 0. So 4x equals negative 23, or x equals negative 23 fourths. So for this function, we found that there's just one location where x, y is equal to negative 23 fourths, negative 11. There's just one location where the gradient is 0. So there's just one possible place where there could be an extreme point. But our next question is to say, all right, knowing that the gradient is 0 at this location, so that when you're at this location, to first order, there's no direction that you can go that will um, increase or decrease the value of f. So it seems like then you're at uh, either a min or a max or um, something in between, which we'd call a saddle. So if that's the case, how can we tell whether it's a min or a max or a saddle? And the answer has to do with examining the second derivative. 
So if we look at the second derivative for this function, remember the first derivative, that's basically the um, transpose of the gradient, let's see where the gradient was, let's see, 8x, 8x minus 6y minus 20, negative 6x plus 10y plus 26. Okay, so there's the, the gradient of our function. If we want to find the second derivative, there are actually um, there are actually four different second derivatives for this function, right? Since we have, we have an f sub x and an f sub y, so we can get a whole matrix of second derivatives. We could take f sub xx, which is 8, and we could take f sub xy, f sub xy would be negative 6, or we could take derivatives of f sub y. The derivative of f sub y with respect to x, that's f sub yx, would be negative 6 again, and the derivative of f sub y with respect to y would be 10. So to find now, so here's our second derivative, we would call this d squared f. It always follows this pattern. If you, if you have a function of two variables, it's going to be a two by two matrix. So this will have the entries on the diagonal will be um, the derivatives with respect to the same variable twice. And then we'll have our mixed partials on, on the off diagonal. So these mixed partials, remember if our function has derivatives which are continuous, then these mixed partials um, turn out to be the same, right? Which they did in this case. We got negative 6 and negative 6. So it turns out that the determinant of this function tells you something. If you, or this, of this second derivative tells us something. If you look at the determinant of the second derivative in this case, 8, negative 6, negative 6, and 10, the determinant is 80 minus 36. So that would be 44. If the determinant is positive, that actually tells you that the function is either uh, concave up in all directions, in which case it would have to look like some kind of bowl like this, right? Or, or the other thing that could happen when the determinant is positive is that it's concave down in all directions. And then you can look at just um, just one of these second partials, either f sub xx or f sub yy. So if you see that f sub xx is positive, you know that in the x direction it's concave up, and therefore, because the term is positive, you know that it's concave up in all directions. So we have this test, and we'll explain it in a little bit, but first just notice that if the determinant is positive, you know you're either at a min or a max, and you can tell just by looking at either f sub xx or f sub yy. Because if the first derivative is positive, it, it means if it's concave up in one direction, it's concave up in all directions. Or if it's concave down in one direction, it's concave down in all directions. Okay, so now looking at this, at this function, we had our one critical point, right? And we know now that um, because the determinant was positive, that it's, it's either concave up in all directions or concave down in all directions. But we also know by looking at f sub xx that it's concave up in just the x direction and therefore it must be concave up in all directions. So that means that that critical point that we found um, is actually a min. So, so because um, the determinant of the second derivative is positive and f sub xx is positive, we know that we have a min at what was our location there? We had uh, the y was negative 11, right? And the x value was um, I think 23 fourths if we check. Oh, negative 23 fourths. Yeah, negative. So we know we have a min there. Um, <clears throat> so if we calculate that second derivative, and then we find the determinant of that 2 by 2 matrix, um, if that determinant is positive, and if f sub xx is positive, you know you have a min. Now if the determinant of uh, d squared f is positive and f sub xx is less than zero, 
the fact that the determinant is positive means that if it's concave up in one direction, it's concave up in all directions, or if it's concave down in one direction, it's concave down in all directions. So by the fact that f sub x, x is less than 0, it's concave down in the x direction. And therefore, because the determinant was positive, it's concave down in all directions. If the determinant is less than 0, then we know we have a saddle. If it's less than 0, it tells us that um, it's got to be concave up in one direction and concave down in another direction. And that creates a shadow, or a saddle, sorry, or um, we would call that a, a hyperbolic paraboloid. And so if you're concave up in one direction and concave down in another, that's going to create a hyperbolic paraboloid. So in that case, this point here, even though it has a tangent plane that's level because the gradient is zero, it's actually not a max or a min. It's just sitting there in the saddle, sort of our mountain pass here. Now, if the determinant of the second derivative matrix is equal to zero, that's like in the, in the uh, one-dimensional second derivative test, then, the, then we can't draw a conclusion because what happens will depend on the third term in the Taylor polynomial.